In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about Atmel Studio. First of all, Atmel Studio is based on Visual Studio, so if you're familiar with the Visual Studio development environment, this should seem fairly familiar to you. After you install Atmel Studio, you're going to, the first thing you're going to want to do is create a new project. For this course, we're going to create assembler projects. You can go ahead and save them or name them or and save them however you like. Um, I find that it is most convenient to name them after the lab that you're working on. Next, you're going to be prompted to select the device. For this course, the device is the Atmega 2560. So you can find that in the list and select it. First thing you might notice when looking at your project is uh, all the different tools up here. I want to draw your attention specifically to this segment right here. You notice that it specifies the device and says no tool. Tool refers to how you might execute the code for your project. If we click on no tool, what we want to do is select the simulator for now. Uh, this allows us to run our program without having to actually upload it to a board. Go ahead and save our changes. You'll notice in this window, it opened this properties view in this window here. Go ahead and close that for now, and it'll take us back to the main.asm which was created automatically when the project was created. So now I want you to pay attention to this window on the right. This is the Solution Explorer. A number of auxiliary windows will open over here, uh, but for now all you need to look, all you need to be aware of is this is where your code file exists. If you have multiple code files, you can set the entry file by right-clicking on that and setting it as the entry file, and then the other files you can add in with include statements. All right, so in the, in the lab, you'll copy and paste code into this window and then run it in the debugger. So once we've selected the simulator, you can come up to this and start debugging. Now when you start debugging, it just executes the program and won't stop. If you haven't set any breakpoints, then it's basically going to run to the end before you have a chance to do anything. So there's two ways to deal with that. You can either set a breakpoint break by clicking over here in the margin, or you can just start debugging and break, which means it immediately breaks on the first line of code. So we're going to do that for now. When you start a debugging session, some of the windows are going to change. In this case, it shows me what line of code it's waiting to execute. If I look over here to the right, I have a new window called IO, and this shows me a lot of information around the the registers that are on the microcontroller. So I can look at the different I.O. ports and I can see their values, which we'll talk more about what those what the different I.O. ports mean. But this is a good place to see that your command is modifying the microcontroller memories the way that you expect them to. Another thing that you can do is you can come to the debug menu and windows and you can see some other windows that are valuable particularly the registers window you can see this is opened up down in this section and it shows me all the registers from R0 to R31 and the value in that register this is convenient because then I can see what's happening to all the registers as I go through my code now let's say I want to run this command and see what happens 
I can come up to this line and say and hit step into or hit just F11. You'll see that it has moved the program counter, so it's waiting to execute this command next. You'll also notice that down in the register section, it has highlighted the area by making the text red that was modified by that last command. So in this case, R16 now contains one. If I step again, you'll notice that the rjump command has modified the program counter to point back to this location. And you'll also notice that since there wasn't a change to any of the registers, none of them are highlighted in red. If I continue to increment, you'll notice that I can see how things are changing in my program. So these are going to be very valuable, or the very the basic tools for troubleshooting and debugging your program. And this will be very valuable for understanding why your code is executing the way that it is. You'll want to become very familiar with the debugging interface. So as you're working through the lab, I suggest you spend time getting familiar with the different features that are available and what you can do with it. So inevitably when you type your programs and you debug them, you're going to start running into errors. So to give you an example of what you might what that might look like, let's put an error into our code. So the increment command in assembly wants a register. But what happens if I just give it a, a, a direct value? I can save it and I can build my project. Well, you can see that it does not like that value and it gives an error of invalid register. Now, sometimes the error descriptions are not as useful as you'd like, so you'll have to pay really close attention to where it gives you an error. And you'll notice that if I double click on it, it takes me to that line in my code where it thinks there's an error. Sometimes, however, the error can actually be on the line above. But you'll just have to look at your code and understand, um, try and understand what's going on. So this is going to come through trial and error and some experience as you work through it. So in this case, if I add R17, it will then build without any errors. The next thing that we're going to talk about is what happens when you actually want to program a microcontroller. Well, first of all, since we're not using anything special to program it, we're just using the, um, the Arduino interface built into the Atmega 256, you'll have to make sure to have installed the Arduino IDE onto your computer. So I have already installed it. And so I already have all the drivers that I need to read uh, to read the Arduino board. So I'm going to plug my board in now. And you'll see it pop up once I connect it to my VM. All right, so the Arduino is now connected to my VM. However, in order to program it using Atmel Studio, I have to create a custom tool. So you can do that by coming down to External Tools, and you can add an external tool and name it. Now, I've already added one, and I've called it Arduino USB. The command that you need to enter is the path to the AVR Dude program that is used to communicate with the Arduino board. I have specified it here. And I will post this in the notes. The next thing we need to do is we need to specify the arguments to pass to the AVR Dude program to properly program the Atmega board. In this case, 
we are handing it some information to tell it how to talk to the microcontroller. We're also giving it a configuration that allows it to understand how to talk to the Atmega 256, telling it that we are talking to an Atmega 256. And the next important piece is the COM port. So this could be different for each of your computers, so you'll have to look this up. You can do that by going to the device manager. And you can see right here the Arduino Mega 256 and it's on COM3. So that's how I'll know what to enter for my command line. So you can see I have COM3 specified. Then the next is the baud rate and you'll use this same value. And this next is telling it what program or what is it doing to that microcontroller. So in this case we're flashing it and we're overwriting it and we're using the path to the hex file that is created when you build your project in Atmel Studio. So if you apply these settings the way that they are, then you'll be able to program your microcontroller. Then programming the microcontroller is as simple as connecting the microcontroller, then you'll need to push the reset button on the microcontroller, then go up to tools and select Arduino USB. At that point it will program the microcontroller and you should see the output down here below that demonstrates that it was uh, programmed correctly. If for some reason there's a problem programming the microcontroller, it will be displayed here and you'll have to look at that information and troubleshoot it to understand why it failed.